Sight See the Tarot is a series on my channel through which I take you on a tour of tarot books, spreads, techniques and tips, different decks, and more. Today, I'll be guiding you through the Riddle of the Sphinx tarot spread from Book M Libermundi by M. M. Moline, published in 2015. Book M is the companion guidebook to Moline's deck, the Tabula Mundi Tarot, which, if you don't already know, is one of my favorite tarot decks ever but we'll also be referencing Israel Brigardi's books to supplement the reading experience. The Riddle of the Sphinx spread accounts for the four directions as the four elements, the four letters of the divine name, yod he vav he and the four powers of the Sphinx. I'm going to be working with the Tabula Mundi Tarot. The Thoth Tarot, of course, is going to be a great one to work with for this session. It's the system that the Tabula Mundi is based on, and the Spirit Keepers Tarot will give you good mileage. If you don't have the SKT because it's out of print, you can download and craft your own majors only deck. Links to the free downloads in the description box. Likewise, Moline's Pharos Tarot majors only is one I also recommend for this reading method. Let's start with Israel Rigardi, and here I'm citing from his 1938 text, The Philosopher's Stone. This is what Rigardi said about how to proceed with a tarot divination. First, choose your tarot deck and tarot spread, meaning before you start, think about the best spread to be using for the nature of your inquiry. As for tarot spread, well, I'll be choosing that for you today, and we're working with M.M. Moline's Riddle of the Sphinx. On screen, you're going to see an overview and layout of the Riddle of the Sphinx tarot spread. This is the spread you'll be using. It's not necessary to write anything down just yet. For now, watch, observe, and get a lay of the land. Later, we will be walking through each step of the reading together, card by card. The four cards around the circle will be drawn from the top of your shuffled tarot deck. The center card will be drawn from the bottom. For this reading, we are going to follow the instructions in Maline's text, Liber Mundi, and use her directional correspondences. That means you're going to need a compass to figure out which direction from your position is north and face north. The left card in your cross will be directed west. The bottom card closest to you is going to be south, and the rightmost card is in alignment with east. You may need to pause the video here and situate yourself so you're directionally aligned. Then resume when ready. The next step, says Rigardi, is to banish the area with the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, known affectionately as the LBRP. Well, that's going to make this video much longer than I want, so we'll be skipping that. I think the point of it is to say you want to consecrate your space, purify the air so there are no unwanted psychic energies lingering by. My favorite efficient method of space clearing is incense, such as using sandalwood, a classic Eastern method of space clearing, or frankincense and myrrh. You can also anoint yourself and anoint your workspace with the essential oils of frankincense and myrrh. Alternatively, a nice, sizable piece of obsidian, black onyx, or black tourmaline on your reading table will do the trick. Metaphysical practitioners of totally different paths seem to unanimously agree these these dark stones are marvelous at absorbing and clarifying the air of icky stuff. In our session together, the sound of Tingshak symbols ringing through space-time shall suffice. And there we have it. I have hereby consecrated your reading space. Now we get to the step where we invoke the divine. After that, we'll proceed with the tarot reading, so let's talk about the invocation. Since the majority of the population is right-handed, your giving hand is probably the right and your receiving hand the left. So that's why many Golden Dawn texts will note the instruction of putting the tarot deck in your left hand and placing your right palm over and on top of the cards as you recite the invocation. If you are left-handed or ambidextrous and perhaps left-dominant, then that might feel terribly awkward for you. 
because for you, your giving hand is the left and your receiving hand is the right. So for you and me, we'll put the deck in our right hand and place our left palm over and on top of the cards. Now for the Golden Dawn based invocation to E-A-O, pronounced E-A-O as you see there on screen. There are a couple of different variations, but we'll be citing the one from Israel Rigardi's 1938 text, The Philosopher's Stone. Let's talk about E-A-O. The E is pronounced like a key, and the O should be hummed or intoned in such a way that you can feel your throat vibrating. This is all coming from Regardi's text, in case you're wondering if I'm making all this up. E-A-O represents one emanation of divinity. This is a bit like how Y-H-V-H, yod he vav he represents four emanations of the monad Holy One, or how the 72 names represents 72 emanations of the Holy One. This is the Trinitarian representation of the Gnostic God. It's one personality facet, one face of the astral light. If God has multiple personalities, E-A-O is one of those multiple personalities. It's one of the many names and many faces of the holy light or astral light. E-A-O is the Gnostic name associated with the Sephiroth Tifereth on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. This is heart-centered consciousness and the residence of ascended masters. It's the center of spiritual teaching or Gnostic teachings. Regardi tells us that E-A-O is a synonym for L-V-X, or Lux, light, where E-A-O and L-V-X form the rosy cross. This is also the structural design of our Riddle of the Sphinx tarot spread from Liber Mundi. The rosy cross is symbolic of the hermetic binary, or duality of all nature, and how the balance of it elevates spiritual consciousness. This is also the symbol for the philosopher's stone. LVX and EAO intertwined is also the caduceus, which you will find repeated throughout the tarot, whereby hiding the secret nature of God in plain sight. E-A-O is the Holy Trinity, and in Egyptian mythos, that's Isis, the mother goddess, and the emanation of magical power. Apophis, or Apep, the embodiment of chaos, symbolized by the serpent, and Osiris, consort to Isis, god over both life and death, judgment, the underworld, and fertility, work product. You will find all this in the Complete Golden Dawn System of Magic by Regarde. If you'd like to deep dive into all this and learn how to implement it in a personal practice of ceremonial magic and witchcraft, then please consider signing up for my Western Witchcraft, the Fundamentals and Doctrinal Basis course on Eliphas Levy's Transcendental Magic. In that course, you are going to attain knowledge of the great secrets, I kid you not, and achieve new heights in the advancement of your personal power. I'll put a link in the description box for more information. When you buy courses from me, you're supporting more free courses content like this video and the Sight See the Tarot series, so please go check out my offerings. Now for the invocation of Haru. It begins in the divine name of E-A-O. That's magic, the cycle of life and death, and the chaos in between. Haru, H-R-U, is the name of the great angel or guardian spirit of the tarot, the operations of the secret wisdom. The prayer you see on screen is the invocation of Haru, which is going to take your tarot reading today to the next level. You just wait and see. There is a reason this pre-tarot divination invocation work is emphasized by the Golden Dawn and the many generations of Western ceremonial magicians that have come before us. Just for a quick note, Alistair Crowley offers a slightly different wording for the invocation of Haru. You'll see it on screen for comparison. 
of interest here is who or what is H-R-U, pronounced Haru. Chick and Tabitha Cicero tell us that Haru is the great angel of the tarot, invoked by tarot readers for divinatory guidance. Tarot Talismans is a fantastic book for deeper insight into all this. In early Golden Dawn texts, the name of the great angel is written as if indicative of an acronym. Is it an acronym? Another popular theory is that Haru is the three-lettered name for Horus, the way angel names are written with three letters. For example, the angel Aniel with A-N-I, Ariel with O-R-I, Vehuel, V-H-V, Haziel, H-Z-I, or Hariel, H-R-I. Contemporary Golden Dawn thought leaders reject the theory that H-R-U is Horus, however. Me, personally, considering that Haru is the great angel of the divinatory tarot guardian over these operations of secret wisdom, I'm intrigued by the history and mythology of the Roman god Apollo, who is associated with the Delphic oracles and known as a prophetic god, a god of divination. Apollo was speculated to be the syncretization of the Egyptian god Horus, son of Isis and Osiris, also written and spoken as Harus. This assertion comes from the Alien or De Natural Animalium by Claudius Aelianus, circa 175 to 235 AD. Per the Alien, Apollo, god of oracles and divination, equals Horus, Heru. Sidebar, fun fact, but first, reinforce in your mind the trinity of Isis, Apep, the serpent of chaos, and Osiris, ye a o Horus, son of Isis and Osiris, is associated with the snake-eating hawk, which reminds me of the snake-eating bird of prey in Aztec legend. Guided by the god Huitzilopochtli, the place where the bird is seen devouring the snake will be the sacred land. The Maya share a similar legend of the snake-eating bird of prey. Fun, huh? Lecture time over. We are now ready to work through the divinatory reading together, which will include invocation of Haru in the name of Iao. So get comfortable. On screen, you're being reminded of the tarot spread we'll be using. Take a moment to shift mindset, deepen and slow your breath, and you may want to pause the video here. Light incense, darken the room, clear your space, and proceed when ready. If you are right-handed, then place your deck of tarot cards in your left hand. Place your right palm, this is your dominant giving hand in magic, over the top of your cards. If you are left-handed, then place your deck of tarot cards in your right hand. Place your left palm, this is your dominant giving hand in magic, over the top of your cards. Visualize a white light from above and the crown of your head is a beacon receiving that white light from above. Take a moment here to visualize and acknowledge the presence of that white light beaming at your crown, being received by your crown, this light that has descended from above. From the crown, the white light illuminates that space between your eyes, the third eye, where psychic visions come to be. Together, we will take a few moments here to breathe, relax, connect, and visualize that white light beaming in the space between your eyes, activating your psychic visions. Listen to my invocation of the great angel Haru. My words are your words. My voice is yours. In the divine name, Yao, I invoke thee, thou great angel Haru, who art set over the operations of this secret wisdom. Lay thine hand invisibly on these consecrated cards of art, that thereby I may obtain true knowledge of hidden things to the glory of the ineffable name. Amen. Now with your mind, move that beaming light from your third eye down through your dominant arm and out to your hand, sending that white light into the cards. Keep visualizing the white light blinking and amplifying in strength, intensity, and magnetism this astral light. 
and listen to my invocation of the great angel Haru. My words are your words. My voice is yours. In the divine name, Yao, I invoke thee, thou great angel Haru, who art set over the operations of this secret wisdom. Lay thine hand invisibly on these consecrated cards of art, that thereby I may obtain true knowledge of hidden things to the glory of the ineffable name. Amen. Keep your hand over your cards. Look up and recite the invocation aloud with me. We'll take it slow. In the divine name, E-A-O, I invoke thee, thou great angel Haru, who art set over the operations of this secret wisdom. Lay thine hand invisibly on these consecrated cards of art, that thereby I may obtain true knowledge of hidden things to the glory of the ineffable name. Amen. At this time, please shuffle your cards. I'll quietly recite the invocation as you shuffle, though your focus right now is on your own cards. Keep shuffling, and as you shuffle, hear my invocation of Haru as your own. Shuffle your cards and focus on your question, your world, your life, what it is you seek guidance on. And as you shuffle and as you focus, hear my words as your own. Intend my invocation to be your intention. In the divine name, Yao, I invoke thee, thou great angel Haru, who art set over the operations of this secret wisdom. Lay thine hand invisibly on these consecrated cards of art, that thereby I may obtain true knowledge of hidden things to the glory of the ineffable name. Amen. In the divine name, Yao, I invoke thee, thou great angel Haru, who art set over the operations of this secret wisdom. Lay thine hand invisibly on these consecrated cards of art, that thereby I may obtain true knowledge of hidden things to the glory of the ineffable name. Amen. In the divine name, Yao, I invoke thee, thou great angel Haru, who art set over the operations of this secret wisdom. Lay thine hand invisibly on these consecrated cards of art, that thereby I may obtain true knowledge of hidden things to the glory of the ineffable name. Amen. Draw four cards from the top of the pack. One, two, three, four. Set aside your deck and collect these four cards together, making sure you maintain the sequential order. You have your four cards drawn from the top of the deck. Take the first card and set it into place at the north sector of your spread. This card measures the intensity of fire and the strength of this element. What is it that you really want? Well, this is spirit reciting back to you what you have told spirit you want, and maybe it's your inner voice, your subconscious, or a part of you that you're not aware of speaking this to spirit. This is a truth mirror so you can see the father of the situation. If this is a general reading, then the fire card foretells career matters. Take the second card and set it into place at the western sector of your spread. This card measures the intensity of water and the strength of this element. This is where things are conceived. This card tells a story of love. How fertile is your landscape for what it is you seek to grow into fruition? This is the card that will tell you the probability of success. What is the nurture, cultivation, and emotional work you need to put in to ensure your success? If this is a general reading, then the water card foretells matters of the heart, of love and relationships, the domestic sphere, and your personal spirituality. 
Take the third card and set it into place at the southern point of your spread. This card measures the intensity of air and the strength of this element. This is analysis and reasoning. Based on card one and card two, this is a logical progression and projection of what will most likely come, what will grow out of what has started. If this is a general reading, then the air card reveals conflicts present, problems to solve, the precise challenge you need to overcome to get where you want to be. Take the fourth and final card and set it into place at the eastern point of your spread. This card measures the intensity of earth and the strength of this element. This is an expression of work product. Here, materiality and incarnation are revealed. This is the action required from this point onward to achieve the success you seek. A positive card is a call to action. A negative card reveals just how much more work you will need to invest. Card four is a natural conclusion after the analysis that took place in card three. If this is a general reading, then your earth card reveals what your physical landscape, environment, and access to resources looks like. This is your personal financial and economic situation at the moment. From your tarot deck, withdraw the bottom most card in the pile and set it into place at the center of your cross. This is the fifth card and the fifth power. The fifth card is Ire. This is the unification of the four previous cards combined as the holy name. This is a message from spirit. Now, looking at the cross of cards in front of you, place yourself in the position of Quirant, not the tarot reader. Instead, visualize and feel the presence of Haru, of a great angel, a divine emanation, and that divine emanation is conveying to you the message. The symbolism on the cards form the language used to communicate between the great angel Haru and you. Listen to hear the voice of spirit. It often comes as a whisper in your inner ear. And because it is the voice of spirit, hearing requires you to listen, and listening requires your faith. If your faith is insufficient, you won't hear Haru. Here, suspend your disbelief. Indulge in an alternate reality. Let open and free your imagination, which will lead you to your intuition, which will lead you to spirit. The great angel Haru is whispering the revelations to you, and you see the angelic script right in front of you through the picture story of the cards. Pause here for a moment of silence with you and the angel Haru. All around you, you feel the warmth, the safety, the protection, indomitable strength of E-A-O. Resume when ready. You've divined the four sacred tools you need. Here is the secret name and the answer to the riddle you've presented. Card one in the north is your wand. This will be how you assert. Card two in the west is your cup. This answers why. Card three in the south is your sword. This is the knowledge or strategy you need. Card four in the east is your pentacle or disc of discernment. Here is the most likely result and prophecy of what's to come. The four sacred tools, four elements, four emanations of the divine name that is the name and face of your own higher self culminate into the one, and that is expressed in the fifth card. The fifth card is Haru speaking directly to you, bearing a divine message from beyond, a revelation that will help you get to where you want to go, to achieve what you seek to achieve, and be that who you are meant to be.
As the light beams upon you from the screen, return your focus to that fifth card in front of you. Let's take a minute of silence here to listen, to take in all that the great Angel Haru, the secret operation of E.A.O., is revealing to you. In the divine name, Yao, I invoke thee, thou great angel Haru, who art set over the operations of this secret wisdom. Lay thine hand invisibly on these consecrated cards of art, that thereby I may obtain true knowledge of hidden things to the glory of the ineffable name. Amen. The Riddle of the Sphinx five-card tarot spread by M. M. Maline from her book Liber Mundi is one I hope you will tuck into your repertoire. Scan the five cards one last time and connect them together for a cohesive takeaway message on that which you've inquired about. For intermediate tarot readers, consider elemental dignities to determine the strength of each of the four arms. How do the four equal the center one? And now I have a surprise for you. In addition to the private message from divinity for you through the divine messenger, the great angel Haru, you have also received a message for the world that you are now to broadcast and share. In the comments section below, please share with the rest of us that bonus message for us all you received in your five cards.